Tom Park, new Durham Town manager. Um, it's a difficult moment, for, I think, for anyone to be taking control of this club in a managerial capacity. But on a personal level, how are you feeling sat here today as, uh, as the club's new manager? Mixed emotions, because I think if I was being really, really selfish with my job role, with my club hat, with my personal ambition hat, with my family life, with my previous commitments at another club, I'd be lying to you if I would have said that I was going to have it now and would have, want, would have wanted it now. Um, if I was being selfish, I had this dream where one day everything had been set up and when I was a bit older, I'd maybe walk into it where I'd enjoy it a bit more <laughs> to start with. Um, but I think if you look at the club's in need of someone to get hold of it because it's lost a lot of good players and a really good manager, who else is going to do it? Who cares enough? I care. Um, I know the club. Um, I know players and we've got a wonderful youth programme to support all of that as well. And from a personal level, will I ever get that opportunity ever again? Maybe not. I understand that it's going to be really, really tough, but I'm mad. And do I think I can do it? Yeah. Will I? Maybe. But I'll give it my soul and we'll go from there. Yeah, and, and, and like anything in football, it's, it's a really ruthless industry and you've touched upon it there. Whenever a new person is appointed into any role, there's someone who came before, there's something that came before. Adam Gustafson, in, in this case, who of course was uh, the club party company with um, earlier this week. Just in terms of him and the job he'd done here, how would you kind of assess overall his, his kind of three years in charge? Very difficult as well with COVID, of course. No, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think you just touched on what I was going to say. I think uh, outstanding. V Outstanding based on the tools that he that he had, and he's a very very good, one of the best, if not the best, young manager around. That is a winner and is ready to win. And we'll maybe sit touch on this in a minute. It's just maybe at the point where is this club at a point where they should be winning? And I don't mean game. I mean, are they ready to go? Maybe that just didn't marry up. Um, and maybe I'd like to personally see him go and smash whatever he does next because I'll say this, I stood in a bar with him not so long ago talking about how I could potentially help him in a year, etc. And um, he's good and he needs to be somewhere where he's happy and he's, it fulfills the remit that he has in his head. Um, this is a rebuild and a long-term project, not a short-term project anymore which it might have been before but with Covid with how maybe other clubs have got more money league changes other clubs coming up other clubs coming down um, yeah uh, you know I, I don't know the ins and outs but it's not my business but all I know is, is I, I got a really late call and I think my first reaction was oh god like in the right way like it's, it's gonna have to be me because there isn't without being horrible like who else is gonna be mad enough to take a team with hardly any players and uh, the transfer window is currently like mental. There, there isn't one and you've got to put seven days in for people left, right and centre. People are signed and the league starts or the, the campaign starts in 10 days. So yeah, I'm the only nutty person that would probably be able to take that one on. Yeah, and we'll touch on kind of the situation that you've inherited a little bit later, but yeah. just in terms of because I think this is important to clarify, when you were first made aware or made contact with about the position, when did that phone call arrive? What did it, what did it look like, I suppose? It's actually, from, it's actually a voicemail from Mumford, mm -hmm. basically saying, I've had a phone call, uh, we've been asked if we can speak to you. Now, I think what people would naturally think is because they associate Lee Perry with Deza and me, it's quite easy to go, there must have been a conspiracy theory. Um, he's in Marbella, for a start, drinking every day and having a nice holiday. Um, so that's parked that one away. And I've got a two-year-old daughter, got a lovely life. I loved my time at Mumford. It was the right thing at the right time for me. Love my job. And like I said, I, I backed the manager. And I, know, I know the manager from school. I went, I've done coaching badges with him. I generally think he's outstanding. Um, and I wanted to, we, we all wanted to support this. Um, so it, it was a massive surprise. I then got brought in here in the morning of the Norwich United game um, and, and 
I was told that they feel that I'm the right person to take what is currently the situation on. Not not necessarily you're the right manager, but you're the guy for this. Um, I'm not going to lie, I have to really think about it because I'm putting my reputation on the line. I've already done that once before. We ain't going to talk. We, we know we know about what happened before with another club where I came in and done a whole rebuild and felt like I got shafted a little bit. So I had that, I had that in my head, like, am I going to be the guy that has to come in, do all the hard work, take the losses to start with, you know, take the hits, and then you get s stitched up, you know. So I had that going on. Um, but I think there's good people here around me that wouldn't do that to me. And I feel that I would all, I've always wanted to build a football club here with a passion. It just doesn't sit right with me that this club doesn't go on. And my opinion is it's the off the stuff, off the pitch stuff that has got to get better before the on the pitch stuff can get better. And I feel like we as a club and the fans and everyone need to really buy into that for us to all be successful. Because if everyone's got their different alignments in where they think it can go, we're never going to do anything. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it has been a tough summer. There's been the league change. There's been an exodus of players. Now the manager has gone as well. I think a lot of fans will be feeling quite concerned about the state of the football club at the moment. Um, just talk to us a little bit first and foremost about what you've walked into and what you've inherited because I think it's quite important to realise maybe what needs to happen in quite a short period of time before, as you mentioned, the campaign starts in, in 10 days' time. So firstly, through, through no one's fault, nobody's fault of, of his own, because you go back to Gussie, I mean, look, look, it's difficult. Like You move leagues, you lose players, um, you, you're trying to put a team back together when there's other teams at the level now. And um, that is crazy and without without being disrespectful I, I rock up an hour before an Oratory United game and without being horrible it's pretty much here mate here's 15 players and I'm not going to lie I don't mean to be disrespectful to the group of players but that ain't going to do very well you know without being horrible um, I, was I was just embar I was embarrassed um, really if you, want the, if you want the truth so here's what needs to happen I've got to work my socks off in nine days to pull a miracle out of the bag for all my contacts to get some sort of team that represents this football club. If not, it's going to be a very, very difficult year and then I'm going to have to rely on my coaching ability to try and pull a miracle off. However, I'm working my socks off to get people through the door that maybe people don't see coming. Going back to the, the travelling thing, I'm going to defend that a little bit. I think it's a little bit of a cop-out. I think... Uh, it's used too much by players. Don't get me wrong, I get it. If you have a job that affects and it's an extra hour, I get all that. I'm not criticising the players potentially for that. However, I think the other things at play are, remember a certain team got relegated and a certain two teams went up and a certain two te or a couple of teams have maybe more money, right? And then money does talk everybody. You know, maybe you don't know everything. So when a player leaves, and I'm not blaming the player for making an excuse, they might say A, but it might be for B. And then that is a chain reaction. You lose one, the next one go. And what's happened is chain reaction. And, and, and Gus, you know, feel for Adam Gustafson, he's had to deal with, with, with all that happening. Players moving, you know, through no fault of their own, going abroad to live, you know, et cetera. So all that happens at one time. And um, I, I would like to give Gussie credit because he could have gone a lot earlier himself. Um, and because he loves the football club, he's obviously stuck and tried to to do something. I now pick up the brunt of all what's gone on. Um, I'm going to be the fall guy. If you look what happened on Twitter, you know, I, I know you've got to ignore it. I was disgusted by it, if I'm honest, you know, some of it. Um, I'm the fall guy and I'm OK with that. What I've now got to do is I've got to work really, really hard, shut certain people up, not people around the football club, people away from the football club, and maybe help the people that are frustrated around the football club realise what we're trying to do and it, hopefully they jump on the same journey as us and back it um, more than ever before. Mm, and I think what you've kind of hinted at there is because of everything that's happened, changes all over the shop, certainly from from a playing perspective. Yeah. This this is going to be a long-term 
project, isn't it? It feels very difficult to see a situation and, and without disrespecting your coaching ability where some mag something magical happens and, and this team gets at the right end of the division. It does feel like it's going to have to be long-term rebuilding, like you said, and, and probably trying to get everyone in alignment again. Football simple. If you haven't got a club where everyone goes, wow, look at that club, it then unfortunately comes down to, are you in the highest league? Do you have the most dough? Fact of life. We're now at a point where, and this isn't being disrespectful, COVID has a big impact, and it's the same for every club, but where people's facilities might be equal or maybe better now. Um, people have got more money. People are in the same league. So people jump ship. And that's not, I'm not blaming the players because players have to earn a living. However, we need to get a culture here where people care about the football club and they want to play for the football club. So a little lad who stands there at nine from Deerham in a Deerham shirt ends up playing. So Ash Fox being the best example I can give you of that, by the way. More of that. They play for less money because they want to play for Deerham. That's got to happen. That doesn't happen overnight. We need to generate that. Um, and, and, and we need to build for six. That pitch has got to be better. The training pitches have got to be better. But we all know that. We're all on the journey. We're all working hard to make that happen. Now, I think we've realised that we need to maybe invest things in more than maybe trying to go up when we weren't ready to go up. Because my argument to the players that, le that left would be, can you imagine if you'd have gone up in the playoffs? So basically based on what they're saying is, if you'd have gone up, we can't do the travelling, so we'll leave. So where would that have left you? That would be my argument to everyone. In, in terms of, and it's, I know it's very difficult to answer this now because we, we don't fully know what the team's going to look like at the start of the season, but I'm talking probably more in the long term. What does a, a Tom Park, Deerham Town football team look like? What does it look like on the pitch? What can people expect when they walk through those turnstiles on a Saturday afternoon? Run. 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 Guess what? Run. And fight for people that pay to come in, in here and interact with the people and show some spirit, one, before anything else. Two, have a clear game model that suits the pitch that you're on versus the league that you're in, because I like playing out from the back and I like watching Barcelona play, but that requires a lot of good players on a really good pitch. Can't do it, so we need to adapt. Three, can we build something where people want to really play for Deerham Town. I love how they play. I love, what, wow, look at the crowd there. They, they, they get behind the, behind the players. Look how professional they are in everything that they do. I want to come. Got to generate that massively. You know, and, we, and listen, we may have a couple of months where we have to suffer. We may have to, but you know why now. It's no one's fault, really. It's just where we're at. And the marker of the fans and the people that are here are when you suffer, can you dig in and we'll come out of it. If you desert and you make excuses and you don't get behind anyone, we're all doomed. This club ain't ever gonna be doomed because look where we're at. What, this is still, I back this up, the biggest potential football club in Norfolk out of anyone and all them other clubs, they know it. So we have got to get the things right off the pitch, which will then get the things right on the field, but it does not work in seconds. You can't keep spending money on footballers, right, and not doing anything else. We need to generate a culture now, all of us, fans. We've got some really passionate fans. In a way, I loved how they've been online. I loved it because what it actually, what it actually shows is they really, really care about our football club, all right? And actually, I get their frustration. Maybe we haven't as a club, and, and, and me, maybe, delivered a message, but actually sometimes silence means that people are working hard behind the scenes and actually all things that go on behind the scenes doesn't need to be shared all the time. I get that you want to know all that go on, but sometimes it's just not right to know. And don't look back, now we've got to look forward. And that would be my message to the fans.
We've turned up here today, you've been on the phone, I think probably all day trying to attract players, trying to get a team together and we've spoken about the various reasons of why that's really difficult and you've kind of delivered a, a message to the fans there but how important now is it as, again, we approach the season, everything's happened, it's happened, we can't change those now, about looking forward and, uh, and bonding people together in terms of how powerful that is for this football club at this moment in time, when, it, when it's, a re it's in a really tough moment, I think we're all yeah. honest about that. How yeah, important yeah. is that? Yeah, massive. But, but again, to the fans, I think, I think there's this perception online that I think they just feel that yes, we're going to play all the desert lads, which I, I get why they would say that. But let me flip the question. Why would I want a stitch a load of kids up and ruin their careers by putting them in a situation like that? You wouldn't, would you? So that's not going to happen. So here's what's going to happen. I've got to work really, really hard to pull a load of experienced and maybe 21, 23 year old lads in quickly. Now, the situation that we're in, everyone, is that we're in a situation where people are all signed and registered. So if I want to sign anyone, I've got to put seven days in and the clubs have got to waiver it. Now, a lot of clubs won't, I get, I get why. Nice people will waiver it, right? There are some players that aren't registered, so you can talk to them straight away. And then there are obviously other avenues, which we won't discuss, that is a clever way of getting players in quickly. So you might not see any movement um, within seven days, but there's movement, a hell of a lot of movement. So, so um, we might have to suffer before we grow. Um, you know where my first game is at. I may have to suffer but we won't in the long term. Good stuff. I think that's a really good message to end it on, Tom. Good, good luck. Um, and uh, I think we're all really excited to, to see what this season looks like, I think probably once we get past the, the next 10 days. <laughs> right, so. That would be fine, yeah. yeah. Cool. Good man. Thank Tom, you, thank you very Cheers, much. Buddy.